Welcome back to the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. Today, we're going to get started on the tile. There's a lot to do before we can stick tile down in there. This is a finished basement, a homeowner, brother-in-law type, come on over and let's finish my basement. There's a lot of walls and there's a lot of grout joints. How am I gonna lay this out? There's a few walls that are going to be exposed. This wall here, this wall here. Pretty much everything in this room is gonna get covered up. This room here is gonna get covered up a lot. This back wall, you're gonna be able to see, but it's, it's back there. We want to focus on the most visible area so that uh, it looks straight. I'm gonna start out here, measuring off this wall, measuring off this wall, get some perpendicular lines, um, see how they transfer into here. Um, you can't just start on that wall and start going this way. You can get lucky. You can get very lucky. And it's tempting. I've done it before and, and lucked out. Now, but you don't want to end up to, like, say, this wall here or this wall here and have to put in little sliver tiles. Or when you come around this room here and have to put in tiny little sliver tiles. You got some chalk lines down on the floor. This one here is parallel to this wall by only two points. If you go, all the walls are wavy. So this one goes all the way down into the bathroom. Now this one here goes all the way this way. And I did my three, four, five triangle, which most everybody knows about. Um, from the intersection, three feet this way. From the intersection, four feet that way. And the diagonal should be 60 inches exactly, or five, three, four, five. So you put that right there where my mark is. And then come down here, and we can see that that's pretty darn close. So that means that, back up here, this wall, this section here, and that section there is perpendicular to this wall by pretty darn good, pretty, pretty close. Um, so this chalk line here, hopefully you can see that, goes all the way down there. That's parallel to this wall. So what I want to see is, is this wall here perpendicular to that wall out there. And I'll do the same three, four, five triangle here with these two lines. I can do it on both sides too. And at that point, if I get, well, we'll see where we are once I get that part done. Right here is my intersection. I'm going to put the 60 or the 5 of the 3, 4, 5 right there. Now we come over here. You can see we are really darn close. There's my intersecting line. I mean, that's pretty darn good for a finished basement. So I guess I was wrong. Uh, most of these walls, even though they do bow, take a look at this. So they, 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 they're all flexy, flexy hanging from the ceiling. So you're going to get some wiggle in these, these walls here. So here's an example of something that you want to try to avoid. So I'm just putting tiles down, um, measuring off of this wall, see how they fit and from here to there. Now, but you can see we've got a little skinny piece here and a wide piece over here. Uh, you want to avoid that. So this grout line will be set in the center. So I'm going to adjust it to the center between the door and then lay some outs or lay down some more tile going that way and this way and see, see what I end up with. If I end up with a tiny sliver behind the toilet, no big deal. No one's ever going to be back there. I don't know if you can see, but this doorway here is is not 90 degrees to anything. So that's just gonna be that way. There's, I mean, unless you pull this door jam out and, and fur it out and shim it up to be perfectly straight, that's the only way it's gonna be straight. We're gonna have a live stream again, a private live stream for Patreon members only. Things we're gonna talk about in that Patreon deal. Yeah, I probably should rephrase that better. Uh, so we're gonna talk about these things, these little wedges, 
Um, we we'll talk about these. These are the tools. We we'll talk about tile spacers. We're gonna talk about Schluter Dietra, unmodified versus modified. We're gonna discuss amongst uh, the the group about using modified thinset over Schluter. Uh, Schluter says you use unmodified thinset, or you use their very, 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 very expensive uh, specialized modified thinset over top of Schluter Dietra. Now, every other waterproof membrane out there from different brands says that you can use modified thinset. Modified thinset is used for most tile installations. What am I gonna use? I'm going with what the manufacturer says and I'm using unmodified thinset. There's no way I'm paying $33 a bag for their specialized modified thinset. So it'd be interesting to talk to some tile guys in that live stream if they wanna join. Um, but right now I gotta get some tile down on the floor. It's, uh, it's 20 after six on a Saturday evening. I won't be back here till Monday. Uh, no cuts today. We'll come back and do all that later. Okay, I'm gonna confuse you a little bit. I'm starting here and working my way this way. How I've done this before where I work my way in from a, a threshold where the tile has to be very specific. Thing is, is I can lay this all out, measure, measure, measure to start at that back wall but by the time I get back to here, the important line, most important line is this line right here that is gonna run parallel to that wall. It's centered on the doorway and pretty much everything is based off of that parallel line and the perpendicular line that goes this way. Sometimes I'll start at a very specific threshold where I'm budding tile from the uh, bathroom, say up to hardwood flooring in a hallway and it's gotta be perfect. And that's why I work my way in instead of starting at the very far end and just hoping it ends up perfect, which it never does when you relay the tile down from your, like, your dry run. So that's why I'm starting here going this way. So I've got my thin set mixed. You, you, you mix it, you let it sit, and then you go back to mixing it again. And just to... So I'm moving right along and realize the camera wasn't on. Um, you can see how these go in. I'll give you a close up on how they work. Um, my grout joint is centered on the room this way. Grout joint is centered on the doorway that way. Uh, everything should be square to the rooms out there. Something that's very common in tiling videos on social media is the, uh, the back buttering. If you don't back butter your tiles, uh, the, the trolls in the YouTube comments go crazy. People who have never installed tile in their life or they've never run a business installing tile. My experience is mostly with modified thin set. And with back buttering and not back buttering, the amount of force and stress and damage needed to get those tiles to pop loose, you're not gonna find in the real world on a floor. You literally need a pry bar <laughs> to get them up, whether it's back buttered or not back buttered. Unmodified thin set, I will be back buttering. The first coat is only those I go back and forth on the more time consuming than just using modified thin set over the concrete floor. But the end result and the longevity of the tile is supposed to last longer. First, it takes a little calendar. It changes. The next one is probably a little less up. I'm totally fine. So sometimes the last 50 years, I'm totally out of the video anymore. The more it always changes, hangers. Remember days, awesome looking overalls, get very stock, drying inside, go outside, drying inside, go outside, 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 Um, and I go, 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 and
When you're using smaller 12 by 12 tiles, make sure you put your wedges and your whatever these things are called in a spot that are not going to interfere with each other once you go to put the wedges in. Running out of thin set. Hopefully, I can get this last row in. All the full-size tiles are in. One thing I like to do before I leave is go back and double check. Make sure I didn't set a bucket on something or walk on something. Just kind of give things the once over. So when I come back to do all the cut tiles, I don't have to pull one out and redo it. Everything looks pretty good. So thanks for watching. I'm not sure how much I'm going to jam into this video. I know this is the end of this video. The next video, I've got something interesting for you. The company sent me a device and I'm going to use that device to cut all the tiles. You're going to want to see what that device is.
Is it a saw? Hmm, I don't know. You just have to stick around. So yeah, tune in. Just making sure this thing is still looking square. Tune in to the next video and we will cut all these pieces. Gonna use a couple different cutting devices to speed the process up. Okay, hammer the like button, click the bell, subscribe. I think I'm gonna try to keep up my, my energy level and go film that handyman business video. I've been putting it off for a long time. Thank you, goodbye.